This film was produced as part of the AgriPol project funded by the EU's Erasmus Plus program. Within the project, educational materials about the EU were developed. We talked to students about what they eat. Students from Bulgaria, Poland and Austria were interviewed. We wanted to know which foods they regularly put in their shopping carts. We gave them a selection of things to choose from. We asked pupils from Bulgaria what they buy when they go to the shop. 100% of them buy cheese. When we look at chicken, 80% answered that they put it in their shopping carts regularly. 80% also get coffee. A bit higher percentage of Bulgarian pupils, 93%, buy nuts. Salad and tomatoes are purchased by 87%. Strawberries are regularly bought by 93%. 69% of Polish pupils buy cheese, milk and strawberries when they go to the shop. 71% put meat and fruit juice in their shopping carts. 77% purchase apples. 63% of the pupils in Poland choose salad as a product which they regularly get. We asked some pupils from Austria how often they consume a product. When we asked them about cheese, 82% answered, that they eat it every day while 18% do that three to four times a week. When we look at butter, 78% answered that they consume it daily and 22% three to four times on a weekly basis. Meat is eaten daily by 89% of pupils in Austria. The most consumed product by them is fruit juice. 100% drink it every day. Here you can see these and other answers. The answers of the young people show, nutrition is multifaceted. Overall, there has in recent years been a trend towards more conscious eating habits among young people. Studies show that attention to climate change and has risen continuously for several years now. 64% of consumers worldwide try to have a positive impact on nature and the environment through their everyday behavior. This also applies to nutrition. More and more young people in Germany are going vegetarian and vegan. Nutrition is not just a private matter. It depends on what is on offer and the price. And, no matter how we eat, our food is derived from raw materials. Both of these factors are strongly linked to EU agricultural policy. But what is it exactly? So the choice of what we eat has indirectly to do with agricultural policy. In Europe, with the so-called Common Agricultural Policy, or CAP for short, its history began in 1957. The European countries were weakened by the Second World War. Food shortages, hunger and poverty prevailed. In order to strengthen the weakened agricultural and food economy, the European countries Germany, France, Italy and the Benelux states founded the European Economic Community EEC, to set the political course for a common market. The aim was to rebuild Europe, economically, and to be able to supply the population with sufficient quantities of food. An important part of this was the agreement on the basic lines of a common agricultural policy. The first two decades focused on structural measures and increasing productivity. These measures also demanded an increase in efficiency and intensification. More was produced, higher mechanization was required, which in some cases meant that fewer employees were needed. As a result, more and more agricultural workers lost their jobs. Only a few found new jobs in rural areas and migrated to the cities. In 1960, a farmer in Germany provided for 17 people. Today he provides for 134. So that, the increase in productivity nevertheless remained attractive for farmers. State-guaranteed purchase prices were introduced for milk, grain and meat. And no matter how much the farmers produced, the EEC states bought it. The undersupply in the 1950s soon turned into overproduction. A first unintended consequence of the CAP were enormous surpluses, the so-called milk lakes and butter mountains, which reached their peak at the end of the 1970s. In response to this surplus production, quantity limits on production were introduced. This included, for example, the milk quota in 1984. If the farmer produced more than allowed, he was sanctioned with a penalty payment. The intensification of agriculture brought further problems. 
small-scale agriculture was displaced by large areas with monocultures. The result? Loss of biodiversity. Highly specialized high-yielding crops also required increasingly complex pesticides and fertilizers. The maintenance of high producer prices, the storage of surpluses and the subsidization of exports cost a lot of money. In 1970, 70% of the EU budget was spent on agricultural policy. Reforms of the CAP attempted to respond to and counteract these developments. Support prices for meat and cereals were reduced and arable land was set aside. To compensate for this, production-independent direct payments were introduced. In 1992, with the McShari reform, environmental concerns were given greater consideration in agricultural policy for the first time. The so-called accompanying measures promoted, among other things, afforestation and the extensification of agriculture as a contrast to the development of intensification. The reforms continue with the further reduction of support prices and the increase in direct payments, which could now also be linked to the implementation of voluntary environmental measures. The most significant change was the expansion of agricultural structural policy with the introduction of the so-called second pillar of the common agricultural policy. This includes the promotion of rural development. Long-term measures that improve production, processing and marketing structures as well as the framework conditions for agricultural activity are the main focus of the support. Part of the direct payments from the first pillar were reduced and transformed into the second pillar. In addition, farmers must now fulfill cross-compliance conditions in order to receive the full amount of direct payments. These include, among other things, proof of concrete measures for environmental, animals, plants, soil and water protection and to maintain the land in good agricultural and ecological condition. The 2014 agrarian reform brought the remuneration of social services even further to the fore. The realignment includes, first, profitable food production, second, sustainable management of natural resources, third, climate protection as well as, fourth, balanced spatial development. In order to protect natural resources and strengthen biodiversity, the integration of environmental requirements was also strengthened in 2014. Greening was introduced. 30% of direct payments were now mandatorily linked to concrete environmental services. These include the reservation of permanent grassland, such as meadows and pastures, crop diversification and the provision of so-called ecological priority areas on arable land. Almost all stakeholders agree that more needs to be done in agriculture for sustainability, more for the environment and more against climate change. Green Deal Farm to fork strategy. Green architecture are just a few of the issues currently being hotly debated. What are the positions, what are the points of contention and who will prevail? The common agricultural policy has evolved, yet there is still much criticism of the new version which came into force in 2021. Here, we would like to focus primarily on the criticism of the three dimensions of sustainability. There are various interest groups that voice criticism of CAP. Environmental organizations are particularly critical of the failure to address environmental sustainability in the CAP. A never-increasing demand for products has led to an ever-increasing burden on the environment. EU agricultural policy does not link support payments to compliance with ecological targets. For example, there are many polluted soils in the EU that lead to groundwater contamination. In addition, monocultures cause biodiversity to suffer. In the EU, farmers' associations have a significant voice, because there are over 10 million farmers in the EU, who provide many jobs. Farmers' associations want their farmers to be able to live off their harvest again, so they need a fair profit from their work. The many regulations of the common agricultural policy cost farmers time and money and make it difficult for farmers to remain competitive. Overall, they want secure future perspectives. Secure prospects for the future are also what agricultural workers want.
there are over 22 million people in the EU who work in agriculture. To give workers a voice, there are the trade unions that campaign for better working conditions. They address social sustainability. In some cases, there are catastrophic working conditions in agriculture, within which workers work without protection and without minimum wage, that is, fair payment. Also, sometimes they are not insured, so if they get sick and can't work anymore, they don't get paid. It is not easy to summarize the criticism of consumer, because consumers can also be farmers, workers are people who are active in environmental associations. In studies, consumers answer that they would like to buy organic, regional or sustainable products and would be willing to pay more for it. But reality shows that when it comes to shopping, people mainly pay attention to the price. We remember that the low price of products in supermarket was mainly a concern for farmers who wanted to make more profit with their products. A low final price also means that workers can be paid less. Therefore, politics must intervene here to create fair conditions for everyone. What we just saw, is how multifaceted the criticism on the CAP is. In order to respond to it appropriately, it is necessary to adapt the CAP. Here are some aspects that could be considered in a revision of the CAP. Step 1. In general, sustainability has to be a core component of the CAP. Thus, the amount of support payments from the first pillar of the cap should be more dependent on environmental friendly management of the area than on the size of the fields. Step 2. Furthermore, it is important to promote jobs in the agricultural sector through employment protection, safety at work and social security that is also granted for seasonal and guest workers. Therefore, EU-wide regulations are necessary. So now when we ask ourselves, why doesn't the EU just solve the problems of the CAP? We see that there are no easy solutions. There are many interests that play a role in the process of establishing regulations. One thing is clear, in terms of sustainability, and at all levels, there is still a lot of work to be done. Today you have learned about the EU's common agricultural policy and also about the criticism of it. We would like to give you the following food for thought. How could we change the CAP? Are there projects in your area that support sustainability? How can you support sustainability through your consumption? How can you do it through political participation?